Editing Maddie here. Before this video starts, I wanted to take a moment to apologize. It's not going to be the best um, video I've done, which is kind of saying something. But my GoPro, it started crashing on me in the middle of making this video and eventually I had to replace it. I've got a new camera, Canon EOS M50. The audio settings I had on my mic that I needed for the GoPro were set to max volume. Even then I'd have to boost it in editing completely too much for this Canon and I didn't realize that until I was finished editing. So the audio when I switched to the Canon is not very good. It's very loud. I'm going to try to drop it down but even then it's kind of choppy at times. I'm going to try to do my best to salvage this video. I'm hoping that from here on in I'm starting to understand how this Canon works now. The video quality is going to be better. So the goal for this one is just to get the information out there if you need the information, sorry for making you suffer through it. Um, onwards and upwards from here. So one of the things I'm going to do to try to make this a bit safer is when I build the real battery, I'm going to cut slots into the sidewalls that I can slide a piece of plexiglass over. That way, if I'm on the boat and I need to open it up, chances are with everything being mounted near the front, save for the BMS, I shouldn't have to take the plexiglass off to do any kind of service work I might need to. I mean, the most I can do is have to check to see if any of these bur burst discs are ruptured. And I can do that through the plexiglass. That way, if I need to service the battery on the boat and the boat's rocking or whatever's going on, if anything happens to fall into the open battery, the plexiglass will protect it. Until then, I'm going to take the box that the batteries came in. It's really nice, thick, double-walled stuff. Um, and make a cover with a couple of flaps for the negative and positive terminal. That way, when I want to work on the battery, I actually have to lift the flap up. And, and then as soon as I let it go, they flop back down and help protect it. So that's what I'm going to work on now. And safety glasses on. First up, before I make another mistake, I'm going to tape this wrench. All right, got that done. Now I've cut this down to fit, but of course, glasses first. All right, let's see if the camera can last more than 30 seconds before it crashes. Now I've got this here that can just live on top of the batteries, protecting the battery post. When I need to work on the main negative, flop that up. When I need to work on the main positive, flop that up. So, Got the, I've got to put the grounding wire back on this. Oh, that vapor deposition. I need to put another fuse in line. So thankfully, I've got some replacement fuses. I bought two of them this time in case I cock up again. If I do, I've got another one. I don't have to wait. If I don't, I've got one for my next battery. Lovely, lovely little life-saving devices. I've got to run a positive terminal from here out to the Anderson connector, and I have to run a negative wire out to the Anderson connector. So what I'm going to do is, where did that board go? In the real board, I'm going to do something with grommets so that it's, um, water resistant. For now, given this is just a mock-up, I'm just going to drill a couple of holes 
run the wires through this and the Anderson connector will just be sitting loose. So I need to go from the smart shunt out to the Anderson connector, which means I need to get the first one of these big guys connected. Is a foot long enough? Yes, because it's going to come directly from here out. Yep, that should be fine. In fact, that should be, probably be more than enough. Can I get away with less? This is going to go to put the back back on before I make a mistake again. This is going to sit here and then immediately pop out. I could put the Anderson connector below. So honestly, I could probably get away with six inches. Do I think I could get away with six inches? Maybe I'll do eight inches. Yes, I'm going to do eight inches. That should be a reasonably safe amount and leave me for some room for an oops. Okay, let's do this. Oh, I do love me a good crimp. Something incredibly satisfying about it. When I started this project, I bought a whole lot of this shrink tubing thinking, man, I bought more than I will ever need. Nope, I need more. This is really deep, the Sanderson connector. It's like that deep. So well, let's see how this works. I have never made one of these cables before. I mean, I've never done most of anything I've done on this project so far, but so be it. Because this is so long, I'm not sure if I can pull this off. If I can't, I will just split it lengthwise. Yeah, I'm having trouble, so I'm going to split it lengthwise and unpeel it. I would say like a banana, but to be honest, I don't open up bananas like this. Though maybe I should, ooh, that's why I was using a cut thing. Oh well, that's okay, these floors are getting refinished. There we go. Split it open. Now, I'm not gonna put shrink tubing over this because, oh, hold on a second. I think I need to put the boot on first. So, what the hell do I mean by the boot? What I mean is these here, that's load source. So I don't know if you can see this coming through here, but it shows you the different number four, number six, number eight wires that you run the wire through this way. Oh, which means I need to drill a hole for this, which, oh, I have a whole lot of things I need to do all of a sudden. Anyways, what I was saying is, I need to cut this boot so that this wire will just fit out. In fact, I might actually run some heat shrink tubing over the outside of it just to help seal it. But it's a cone. So I need to figure out how far do I need to cut the cone to get the wire to come out the other side. I need to run that wire through the face board into this, through this, then crimp this connector, do the same thing on the ground, of course, and jam it into this. I have a lot to figure out. Okay, so I cut it to the 35 line, which I'm guessing is, yeah, 35 millimeter, and the four gauge anchor wire fits through just barely, which is exactly what I want to keep a nice watertight seal. I hate GoPro with every fiber of my body. All right. At this point, the GoPro completely lost audio, so I'm just going to voice over what I was doing here. To get the size of the hole that I needed for the main disconnect, I used the caliper to measure the outside diameter behind the switch, divided it by two, and then I used one edge of the caliper on the center point and just started rotating the caliper around, marking it often enough that it ended up with a circle I could work with. And you can see it's not a perfect circle, but it's certainly close enough for what we need it to do. Next, I need to get the drill bit that's the right size for the main battery lines, which is this one here. Same outer diameter. It's a little tight, but that's okay. I can actually get the wire through. I want it to be tight. Again, it's just a mock-up. In the real one, I'll have a proper grommet. So first, before I do anything, I'm going to use the big drill bit to drill a hole, which will allow me to get my Dremel in with a router bit. And I'm going to use that 
to cut out the rough circle and then I will use, I'll just test fit the battery and keep trimming at it until it fits in properly. So you can see the Dremel here with the router attachment and the little plate on it that lets it go flush up against the board. And this is the first time I've ever used this tool. It actually works surprisingly well. Slow and steady wins this race. You can't hear it, obviously, with a broken audio, but I had the Dremel set to a relatively low speed. Um, I didn't want it to go too fast and have it sort of pull through the wood. I wanted it to be nice and slow. It took longer, but it meant I was able to trace the line a bit better. And there you go. A hole without a hole saw. Not too bad. Not perfect, but not too bad. So here I'm looking to see where is it not cut out enough. And I'll use a pencil to mark the areas that I still need to relieve a little bit further. I'm just looking for the spots where it's tight, making a mark, and then I'll hit it with the Dremel again. I'll just keep going back and forth like this until it fits. I want to keep it relatively snug because there's not a lot of a lip between the faceplate you see and the outer diameter at the back. Just some very light passes. It's much better to go back and forth several times than to cut too far once. And it fits. So I've got this on now, routed out. And now I'm going to bring or drill a couple of holes just below it for what will be the connector. So this is roughly 12 inches across. I just put a mark at six inches, 26 millimeters. So I wanna come 13 millimeters off either side. I know I'm switching between inches and millimeters. Welcome to life in Canada. All right. No, I'm actually going to step this because this drill bit is so dull. All right, so I'm just stepping up through the drill bit sizes now. It's a kind of dirty way to get this thing centered without my pillar drill. All right, now this cable should fit through. Ooh, nice blow it in the back. The little known carpet knife deburring tool. cords up where these wires up that's all right okay so positive on the left there we go what I don't know is whether this prong should be up or down I'm gonna have to figure that out all right now I'm looking at the Anderson connector. There's some pins in there. 
So if I look where positive is, positive is on the left side. Do I want it to go in this way? All right, I feel a divot along the top, which would match this. So it's gonna go in like this, positive on the left. Blades are, so I don't know if you can see that. I can't use my camera, my phone to preview the video because it's, well, camera's crashing. But there's a little plate in there and I believe this catches the plate. This little back lip. There's a bump at the front, a big pronounced bump, and a little ledge on the back. So if I'm assuming that the ledge is what grabs that plate, then I want it like this. Now, will my 35 millimeter be the right size? I suppose we see. Everything about this is a giant experiment. camera doesn't mess up my first ever attempt at crimping an Anderson plug. Hmm, feels like it's working. Back it up and hit it a second time. So it's a very long connector. I want to hit it a third time. I think I do. So after two crimps, I don't know if you can see this. Again, I have no preview of what it's seeing. But you can see one crimp, two crimp, and I still have a nice chunk at the front. So I'm going to hit it a third time. I should mention this is the Anderson 175 amp connector. I tend to overrate the heck out of everything. I don't ever want to be in a situation where I feel like I was penny wise pound foolish for a couple extra dollars for the bigger connectors. <sighs> you know, the big commercial companies, they can afford to get this stuff absolutely perfectly optimized because they just do it a hundred times and then they do it the right, exact, perfect, optimal way thousands of times. I'm only doing this a few times. What I'm doing now is going back and hitting the, as I did each one, there was a little ring where I spaced between them. So actually help me back this off and I'll show you. So you see there's this little ring here. I don't know if you can see that or not. So there was one here as well. I'm just gonna hit this just to give me an even crimp across the entire length of this connector. Is this overkill? Yes. Do I care? Nope. we go. First ever Anderson crimp. And it feels certainly strong enough. Okay, so now what I need to do is run <clears throat> the negative line. Whew. As frustrating as this is, it is still fun. You know you're doing something enjoyable when even when even when everything goes wrong you're still happy. I'm still happy. All right, so I'm going to do this one a little backwards and that is pull this forward. I'm going to push this through. Come on. Go in the hole. So I'm trying to get the slack I need to get to that terminal.
All right, so if I go to here, that's how far I can take the face off, which is a full spin, which I think is a good amount right there. All right, and then again, I'm sorry if you can't see this. I am very limited in what this camera is doing without crashing right now. So on this end, this goes to that terminal on the smart shunt and then bringing it forward and I'm going to cut it right about here. I'll put the other Anderson connector on it, run that over to there and then I should be able to snap the Anderson connector on. Ah, there we go. Never cut towards your own thumb. Apparently I'm a very slow learner. Because this cable is totally free in the back here, I'm not worried about the alignment relative to this one. I will crimp it, rotate it to get it where I want it to be, and then fish it up rest of the way. When I first started researching this, and I saw the different people who had spent the money on these hydraulic crimpers, I was like, really, are they that good? Yeah, yeah, they are. If you're gonna be doing this, get one of these crimpers. They are worth their weight in gold. All right. So now I should actually able, be able to pull this back and connect the Anderson connector for the first time. I've never done this before. I'm actually kind of excited. Okay, positive, negative, positive, negative. Positive, negative, okay. I think this should just snap in. Oop, that was definitely a snap. Snap, snap. One Anderson connector. Oh, I really hope the camera's still working. So, the reason why this boot is so nice is when you're not using it, you cover it off like that. And when I have the wires that will go to their loads, the Victron, the motor, whatever, these mate. And with the ribs, I don't know if you can see them or not, but it creates a waterproof connector or water resistant connector, not waterproof. <laughs> okay, so I had to leave a fair bit of a length. I couldn't really go much less than this and still be able to crimp them with the boot back, but that's okay. It's not the worst thing in the world to have a little bit of flop. I was hoping originally this would be set further back. And when I do the real face, I'm gonna see if I can find some grommets that can snap in, in which case I can crimp these without being through the face and then feed them through the face, snap the grommet into place and then clip them in and I won't have to have quite so much. But really, even if I have to leave this much, it's not the end of the world. Um, however, I decide to grommet these to keep the water out. Hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. That's, that makes me very happy. So yeah, all six batteries when I'm done will sit like this when they're unused. I've decided that when I build the final batteries, this was kind of cute to put it up on the side, but these bolts are, they love to just fall out. So I think when I build the final battery, I'm gonna put it on the bottom. Um, just make it easier to put the bolts in and out. I don't really need, like there's no reason to have it up on the side here. This cable could easily just terminate right here and then this one could pop off and come up to the, through the hole here. 
Anyways, that's exactly why we build a prototype to figure out all of these little thingies. So the next two things I need to do, um, and I don't think I'm going to do them tonight because I'm frustrated with this camera and I am going to just call it a night. Tomorrow I am going to hook up the soft power button and the pre-charge resistor. See you in the morning, hopefully with a better camera. I got fed up with GoPro. It When I was trying to film last night, it just kept crashing and crashing and crashing. So I spent a bunch of money I probably shouldn't have and a new camera. Hopefully things are going to be better from this point forward. I still have so much to learn about filming. I might very well make some mistakes in this video. If I do, please bear with me. Um, I'm new at everything. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is drilling a hole for the soft switch for the BMS and for the pre-charge resistor button. I'm not going to worry about the USB for now. I'll deal with that in the next one. What I'm going to do is use a stip drill. So what I've done is I used the calipers to measure how big the outer diameter behind the face plate of this button is. And then with that, I just went along the step drill until I found roughly where I wanted it, which is that ring right there. And I put a little black mark on it. I'm gonna actually do the same thing on the other side. This black mark should scrape right back off. Oh, I need to mark where I want these buttons. I'm going to come in. Let's just, links. <laughs> I'm gonna come in about three inches. I'm not worrying about making this super accurate. Do another one at three inches. Over here, I will do the same thing. So it's at 12, so I'm gonna come in. Links! <laughs> I can't be mad, this is too cute. I'm not worried about coming down exactly three inches. I'm just trying to get a rough idea. And more importantly, I've got two points. So now when I come in at three inches, let me do this. I got the two lines to go against. I know you probably can't see this. I have a very affectionate kitty that I don't feel like kicking off. Okay, for the purposes of this prototype, that's good enough. Can you hear this a little bit? Let me see if I can set the microphone up. It's too adorable. Oh, I do hope this new camera is working. I haven't been able to figure out how to get the Canon to preview audio files on my phone. So I'm just assuming the audio is not screwed up. This is just a guide for the step drill. Now my two buttons are different sizes. So I have to decide now, do I want these, the first drill I'm going to, the first hole I'm going to do is the main battery cutoff, um, or sorry, the BMS soft switch. And the BMS is on the right, looking at it from this position. So I think I will put the BMS button here, and then the pre-charge resistor I can set up on the left side. Would you believe I've never used a step drill before this moment? I can't see the black mark anymore. That might still be too small, but let's find out. Ha ha! Good enough for the prototype. Okay, so the last one is now the push button switch that's going to connect the resistor for pre-charging your inverter. So you plug in a charge or plug in the inverter or whatever the load is to this, 
We'll press the pre-charge resistor button for a moment and what it does is it lets a small amount of power through the resistor. So the capacitors that are in the inverter, the Quattro in my case, have a chance to sort of charge up rather than, uh, capacitors can charge and discharge extremely quickly. So if you just connect the wires and the big capacitors on the inverter are completely empty, it'll try to charge those res resistors almost instantly and you'll get a spark at the moment that you make the connection. Press the button, charge up the capacitors, you press, press and hold it for a few seconds, then you turn it on and there's no sparks anywhere. Okay, it's big enough at the front, but it's not big enough at the back. So what I'll do is, Turn this around and just give it a little love tap from the back. Let's see if it'll fit now. Oh, geez, that's close. That is really close. I'm gonna try to just scrape it with my knife. If that's the shape I want, because I went use the strip drill, step drill front and back, it's got this shape to it. So I'm just running the blade along to take that little high spot off to see if that's enough to let the switch go in. Yep, and that worked. Okay, excellent. Now, I'm not gonna put this one in yet because I still have to set up the wires for it and that's something I need to figure out as well. <sighs> ah, this makes me so happy. I had run a wire through here and because of that, the hole is plugged. There, now it's plugged again. So you can see the hole is plugged. You can't see through it on that side. So the way you get rid of it, the old solder, is you push the plunger down. These things are super cheap, by the way. Uh, solder suckers is how I've always known them as. I heat up the end, and now that it's liquid, Just like that, it sucked all the solder out and you can see, you can see through it again. That's how solder suckers work. So what I'm going to do now is I've got the only ring terminals I had that were big enough for the uh, blue C connector. The ring terminals were for this, what, 10 gauge wire. So I did a little length of 10 gauge that'll go onto the back of the batteries. What I need to do is I need to go First post on the main switch, through the resistor, through the switch, to the second post. The problem with this 10 gauge wire is there is no way it's going to fit through these holes. So what I've done, or what I'm going to do is give myself some small wire here that I will go from here to here directly and then from the other side of the button and the other side of the resistor I will have a small length of wire that I will then um, soldier these two together and put some shrink tubing over it. These wire stripping tools, Damien from Brewpeg talked about them ages ago. Absolutely brilliant purchase. Highly recommend. Resistors don't matter or don't care which side uh, is which. They're not polarized. Okay, so what I should probably actually do is make this a plug. So, hmm. Do I have any plugs? Gosh, do I love having spare parts kicking around. So, my solution. These are really standard. Again, I believe they're called two millimeter pitch um, pins and connectors. If you've ever worked on a computer, you've used these. This is what you find on the motherboards. Every, anything where you plug a cable in, it's these things. I want the switch. So the voltage, not that there'll be any voltage. Oh, uh, yes, there will be voltage. Okay, so I want the switch to go to the mail pin so that if I short against that, nothing happens. And the female, you can guess why they're called what they're called, will go to these. So, the way this works, you set that in and you solder it. Or you can actually just crimp it. There we go. Ah, that worked. Now 
Now this is the tricky part, is this is meant to go through a circuit board and get soldered into the hole of the circuit board. What I'm going to be doing is trying to solder wires directly to it, which is really not what they're supposed to be, what you're supposed to do. There seems to be the trick is when, if you just try to take the blob of solder onto the wire, it doesn't work. But as soon as you apply fresh solder to it, the heat seems to spread and it actually goes on to the wire quite a bit better. I'm not sure why, but that is my lesson for today so far. I don't care how ugly this is, I just want it to work. This is not a proper plug by any stretch of the imagination. I'll think of something better for later. <laughs> Let it not be said I have any shame. I have no shame. Eh, there have been worse crimes. There. There is such a massive gauge difference. Ah, this is so silly. There we go, that did it. And I have an alarm going off at work. Oh right, what I was gonna do was strip this back and then loop it right around here. Okay, so let me do that now. Put that over that. Put this with a bit of heat. Now, if I plug in the button, I lost one of these, but I still have another one. I've got a ground one as well, but I've lost it. But the nice thing about this is now I can do that. There we go, it's suddenly an extra set of hands. And look at that, 50 ohms resistance. Let go of the button, nada. Okay, I'm going to turn off the camera because I really don't know how much battery is left. I'm going to now take all of this and mount it in the front panel. Eee! I'm getting excited. This was the problem I was saying about how I can get these through the hole, but I can't get the resistor through the hole. That is why we put the plug on it. Camera's recharged next day, and I'm starting to learn a bit more about this camera. We left off putting the backpack on. Run the switch in. <clears throat> and now the last thing to do is to connect the switch. Right. Only short when I hit the button. Now, let's start reconnecting things. When I build the final box, if the front can't come off by itself, it's gonna get pretty hard to access anything down below. So I think on the finished box, I'm still gonna want the face to come off. Okay, let's plug in the BMS. BMS is plugged in. The switch is on. So now there should be nothing on these pins because 
the BMS is off and the main disconnect is off. Pressing the pre-charge resistor should jump it up to 50 volts. 54 volts. Now that would be low current because of the inline resistor. Now, turning the main battery on. 54.25. Ladies and gentlemen and others, we have a working battery. It's done. And now, okay, soft off. Soft off didn't work. Why did soft off not work? Okay, not one problem. I can still use the main battery disconnect. Thank you for watching me finish the battery, minus the software disconnect. I'm not too terribly concerned about that. I'm the Digital Mermaid, and uh, next time we play with a Victron Quattro.